trouble ahead. Got my six gun handy, got my rifle too. We'll be meeting redskins before we're through. But I'll drop them dead before they ever get you. Get along, little pony, get along. Get along, little pony, pick your feet up smart. Gotta get going, then we might as well start. I'll sing you a right pretty song. Get along, little pony, get along. Get along, little pony, get along. It seems to me as if we should come to some signs of civilization before now. Four days of hard riding without seeing a ranch house. It don't seem possible. Listen, sound to me like I hear wagon wheels. Sure enough, it's a wagon train. They are coming out of the same country we are heading into. India. down that draw. Come on. for you to ask the way for Paradise Valley. <laughs> well, our wagon tracks will lead you right into Paradise Valley, but I wouldn't advise any friend of mine to go there. Indians? The Indians are bad, but the whites in that district are worse than the Indians ever dared to be. Do you know a rancher there by the name of Larry Monroe? He's about the only one left there. Thanks. Remember, I warned you, if you ride into that valley, you'll never come out alive. That's a chance we've got to take. So long. Be careful. Take care of yourself. Strangers just rode in, Mom. I don't 
much like the looks of them. I'll go out and talk to them. You stay here and keep them covered. We're looking for a man named Larry Monroe. Is he here? What's your business with Mr. Monroe? We don't rightly know, ma'am, until we talk with him. You see, he sent for us. Said he was in some sort of trouble. My name is Wade. Kentucky Wade. I might have known it. I'm Larry's sister. It's all right, Buck. They're Larry's best friends. You must be Trigger Benton. That's right, ma'am. And you couldn't be anyone but Mike Morales. Si, senorita. And this is Senor Hanford. Oh, he lets all his friends call him dude. I hope you'll let me call you that, too. I can't wait for Larry to find out you're here. Isn't he here? Where is he? Well, he went to town this morning without telling me. I was just going in myself because, well, it's dangerous and I was worried. In that case, ma'am, I reckon we'll ride along with you. You better stay and watch after things on the ranch, Buck. You keep this for me and take very good care of it. paper's opinion that when peaceful ranchers are driven from their homes by organized outlaws, it is high time the citizens of this district took the law into their own hands. Coming from you, Matt, that editorial's a classic. Hmm. All the ranchers gone but Monroe. And when we get his place, we've got a 15-mile stretch of border to run cattle in from the other side. And we'll make some real money. Well, it might not be so easy to get Monroe's ranch. He'll put up a fight. Huh. Yeah? If he couldn't fight with the ranchers back of him, what can he do now that he's alone? He'll sell out inside of a week. If he doesn't, he'll wake up some morning and find he's been... Larry Monroe just rode into town. Stopped at the bank. Maybe he's ready to sell out now. See what you can find out. If he's not here to sell, now's as good a time as any for a showdown. You wait here and be ready to back any play I make. Mm, it's not gold rock, Larry. I'll tell you that right now. Well, it's some kind of metal, though. Look at those specks in it. Well, it won't add a cent to the value of your land, but I'll test it if you say so. All right. I'll be back for it before I go home. All right. Well, Monroe, here you decide to sell your ranch. You heard it wrong. Hope you ain't making a mistake. If I was in your place, you ain't I'd... in my place, and you never will be. Sounds like you're looking for trouble. No, but I ain't running from any. And you can tell your boss, whoever he is, that he and all his hired killers can't run me off the Circle D. Are you hinting? I don't hint. You heard what I said, and you know what I meant. Now it's your move. Shut up, Larry. There's no sense in you and I having any trouble. That's up to you. giving him a chance to draw. I guess Nevada's gun will tell the story, Sheriff. Looks bad, Larry. This gun ain't been fired. Of course not. Monroe shot him down cold. 
I drew to try to protect him, and Monroe outshot me. There's my gun with one empty shell on it. Then you swapped guns with him. Hey, anyone seen this ruckus? Yeah, I did. I saw the whole business. It happened just the way. But I was so far away, I couldn't really tell just how it happened. Well, you're sure a great help. I guess there's nothing to do with lock you up and let the courts decide this. You fellas look after Nevada. There's been trouble here. The sheriff is taking someone to jail. Why, it's Larry! Wonder who them poor strangers are, boss. Can't imagine. And I don't like the looks of it. It ain't customary to walk into my jail wearing so much hardware. We had no intentions of using them, Sheriff. But if we did, we'd have to draw much faster than that. Don't worry, Sheriff. We've never thrown in against the law yet. Kentucky way! Do my trigger! Why, you old scorpions! All right, Sheriff. They used to be law officers back home. Well, I'll tell you, they framed me on something out there. Could we bail him out, Sheriff? Maybe. You'll have to see Judge Lawrence about that. Probably cost you a heap. Come on, boys, shell out. Is Judge Lawrence on the level? Absolutely. Where will I find him? Over at the Silver Dollar, I reckon. I'll introduce you. You boys stay here. I'll be back in a minute. Granting <laughs> bail to a man accused of murder is serious business, Sheriff. But you know Larry Monroe, Judge, and you know he's no murderer. Personally, I'd rather trust Monroe's word than the man that accused him. All right, if you recommend it, Sheriff. I'll make out the necessary papers and bring them over to your office. Thank you, Judge. What's it all about, man? The judge is going to let Monroe out on bail. Keep off any of our men in here to watch Doc Hardy. Follow any move he may make. I just heard that Judge Lawrence is going to turn Monroe loose on bail. What? Why, Judge Lawrence wouldn't do anything like that. He's signing the papers right now. Hmm. No wonder this town has become a hangout for all the outlaws in the territory. It looks to me like it's about time the citizens took matters into their own hands. It's the only way we'll ever get any law in here. Listen, man. Judge Lawrence is going to turn Monroe loose on bail. Now, are we going to stand behind a court that will turn a killer loose a half an hour after he's arrested? No. 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 What's keeping the judge? I don't know. He should be here now. Say, Larry. I'll get your hands, Larry. He'll be out here in a minute. Just follow me. Sheriff. There's a mob gathering at the saloon, and I don't like the looks of it. Better get inside, Sheriff. I ain't never run from a mob yet. And I'm too old to start. That's close enough, men. I said that's close enough. You've got nothing against you, Sheriff. But you've got a prisoner in there that... Well, I've got a prisoner inside that's going to stay inside, safe in the hands of the law. I'm giving you about five seconds to clear out. Then I'm declaring open season on the lot of you. Are you going to stand there and let one man back you down? No! <laughs> Shoot over the heads first. They are not. 
not fooling. All right, let him have it. Why don't you let Larry out? I'll do that. Open up, sister. I guess you're right. It ought to be safe enough from here on.
to make it safe to break the news to them pole cats out there. Might be wise for you all to slip out the back way and trail after your friends, just in case they need you. Bet those hombres liable to get kind of salty when they find you let the prisoner slip right through their fingers? I'll have to take that chance. Go ahead. prisoner and the other men that were in here. Halfway to Yuma, but now I reckon. If you've let that killer slip out of our hands, Sheriff, it's my job to protect prisoners till they get a fair trial. And you deserve the thanks of every law-abiding man in this town, Sheriff. Buckskin, I'm surprised that a man of your standing would be a party to such a thing. But I thought Never you... Never mind. I want you and Doc Hardy and uh, Braden and Dory to join me in backing up the sheriff in support of law and order in this town. We are with you, Mr. Keeter. Yes, sir. Well, me too, I guess. The rest of you, clear out. All right, come on. To give you any more trouble, Sheriff, look us up over in my office. Thanks, Matt. That's mighty white of you.
idea. First you tell us to break into jail and drag Monroe out, then you bought me off for trying to do it. I knew they smuggled Monroe out of town. I sent Steve and his men to see that he didn't get away. So you bought me out to get yourself in solid with the sheriff, huh? Pretty smart, I think. The less the sheriff suspects, the safer we all are. Sure. You fellas mosey over to the saloon. I'll see you later. Steve and his men just rode in. Finish what you started out to do? Didn't have to. The Indians beat us to it. Indians? Yeah, some of Buckskin's friends, I reckon. Look like part of Red Hatchet's tribe. And Red Hatchet's got them. That's the end of them. That gives us Monroe's ranch and a 15-mile stretch of border to run cattle over. Now we can make some real money with no one to interfere. Look at that. Monroe struck it rich. Struck it rich? What do you mean? Well, he brought these samples into the assay, and I tell you, he really struck it. Gold? No, platinum. Platinum? What's platinum? It's worth twice as much as gold. Where did he find it? He wouldn't tell me. That's a lot for you. Now that he's worth more to us alive than dead, the Indians have killed him. Red Hatchet wouldn't kill him quick. He could help it. He'd take him to camp where he could die. Slower. Get out of Red Hatchet's camp. If Monroe's alive, take him to the hideout and sweat him. Red Hatchet may be a cousin of mine, but he wouldn't give up a prisoner just because I asked. Buy him all. Offer him money, rifles, anything he wants. Only get Monroe alive. Steve, you go with him so he knows it's on the level. Look, man, that stuff will run over a thousand dollars to a ton. They didn't kill him. They've taken him prisoner, and that's worse. The well, least we can do is follow the trail to camp. Hope for a chance to set him free. Oh, that's easy. There's three of us. There's only three, four hundred Indians. Night 
come. Plenty coal, red hatchet. Make big fire. Learn all white man. Plenty warm. You shouldn't have done it, Kentucky. You've thrown your life away for nothing. Oh, maybe not. Anyway, I wouldn't have slept very well if I hadn't tried. Oh, uh, hey. You know what? No more. Red Hatchet, we must talk the same as white men. Because, uh, my friend, him, no talk Indian. White man. What does he want? The Red Hatchet's camp. The white chief sends him to get prisoner you are holding here. White chief? What does he mean? It's beyond me. Red Hatchet give no prisoners. The white chief will pay you money, plenty of money. Red Hatchet need no money. Does, uh, Red Hatchet Need rifles? How many rifles? Ten. Plenty. Enough for all your men. Three prisoners. Catch them. Which one? Enough. Is it possible that white men would trade rifles to the Indians? It's hard to believe. No. Let's go. We hold. It's a shame. Start them out to deal. Take him out. Easy, Miss Lucy. You couldn't do him any good, even if he did get loose. Kentucky, are they going to kill him in cold blood? I doubt it. They could have let the Indians do that. Then what do they want with him? I can't figure it. But he must be worth more to him alive than dead. And that's some consolation. But what's going to become of you? Now, don't worry about me, Miss Lucy. I reckon Trick and the boys will turn up along about nightfall. we can do to get them away from those red devils, Trigger? When they bring them out to title to the stake, we ride in shooting and see what happened, huh? Can't figure any other way. We'll try it. But only as a last resort. <laughs> Up on him and knock him out without rousing the camp, Mike? Sure, but what for? Stampede the horses straight through camp. Dude and I'll stand by. When the Indians scatter, we'll make a dash and try to get Lucy and Kentuck out of the village. It's practically finished already, amigo mio. Hold my horse. Let's try to sneak up a little closer. Is that noise getting on your nerves, Lucy? Yes, it is. Don't let it bother you. You know, Indians are like coyotes. They like to hear themselves howl. Well, it doesn't mean a thing. Thanks, Kentucky. But I know what that chant means. The devil.
Smith dance.
like we're too late. the night to round up enough ponies to follow us, even though they could pick up our trails in the dark. But we can't run away and leave Larry prisoner with those Indians. Larry's not with them, Mike. Not with them? How we got away? Some white men came and bargained for him. Promised to let them have a lot of rifles for him. White men? Who were they? We were held prisoners in a teepee. We couldn't see them. We could only hear their voices. You think maybe they kill him? No. It would have been easier to let the Indians do that. Something has happened to make Larry more valuable to them, alive than dead. What do you reckon they want with him? That's something we've got to find out. But we can't do anything about it tonight, so we might as well get back to the Circle D. Topic. Who are you? What have you brought me here for? You find out. And don't forget, I'll be watching you every second from the next room. In the dark. Steve Claggett. I thought I recognized your voice. I sort of thought you would. Now, what do you want with me? Nothing that'll hurt you much, Larry. Just a little favor between friends. You've got the nerve to call yourself a friend after framing a murder on me and trying to get me lynched? Just where did you get them ore samples, Monroe? So it was metal. I struck it rich, eh? Not too rich, but enough so we'll make it worth your while to tell us where you found it. What's the deal? You tell me where you found this sample and your ranch will never be molested again. I gave you a message to take to your boss once before. Now I'll give you another. He and all his hired gunmen couldn't scare me off my ranch, and they ain't scaring me now. We may not have to scare you off it, Monroe. Whoever you are, I reckon you won't be using that gun on me. What makes you so sure? <laughs> then there wouldn't be anyone left to tell you what you want to know. You're right, Monroe. We ain't gonna use a pistol on you. There are other ways to make men talk besides shooting them. Since the break of day, there'll be 20,000 head on the prairie trail. And tomorrow we'll be on our way. Saddle. 
creaking as we're riding home from the roundup on the rain. Tired ponies loafing along while we're singing a song of the same. Why, Miss Lucy, what is it? Oh, I don't see how anyone who claims to be Larry's friend can be so happy when we don't know where he is or what's happened to him. Well, you just don't understand him, ma'am. Either one of them would swap places with Larry if it'd make you any happier. Then how can they sing at such a time? It's just their awkward way of, of trying to cheer you up. I'll tell them to quit. No. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. No, that's better. He likes singing while we're riding home from the roundup on the range. Sat and easy in the saddle and a swinging along. <laughs> I not know the horse sing like that, don't you? The next thing we know, it'll be trying to play the guitar. Take it easy, dude. Don't let him get you down. Well, anyway, I liked it. Even the duet? Even the duet. Well, ma'am, we'll be staying so long for a while. We've got business in town. Business? What sort of business? We don't exactly know ourselves until we get there. Come on, boys. Seeing as you don't like our company, we'll leave you alone for a little while to think things over. When you come back, the answer will still be the same. Keep an eye on Monroe while we're in town, Baldy. See if he's still here when we get back. Don't worry, he'll be here. Yourself, Keeler, or did you have someone to help you? Well, did you get Monroe away from the Indians? Sure, but we had to promise them a lot of rifles, and you better see that they get them, too. Bad business, arming the Indians. Yes, sir, I don't like it a bit, Keeler. They might use those rifles on us if they get enough of them. You can get out of this deal anytime you don't like my way of running it, Purvis. Oh, I didn't mean anything like that, Matt. Then keep quiet. Well, did Monroe tell you where he found that platinum deposit? No, and I don't think he will. I worked on him all night and couldn't get a thing out of him. Hmm. Must be some way to make him talk. How about his sister? Indians get her too? Yeah. We better forget about her. She and Kentucky Wade have gone up in smoke. Say, uh, Buckskin, do you believe in ghosts? Are you trying to be funny? Well, here's Kentucky Wade and his three partners. He's the first white man that's ever got away from Red Hatchet. If he got away, that means Monroe's sister got away, too. Yeah, and it ain't safe to fool around that ranch until we show Wade and his men are out of the way. When you find a good, safe way to get rid of those four gun throwers, let me know. Hmm. All right. First, you send Foster to the Circle D to tell Lucy Monroe he's found her brother. And then? Let him lead her straight to Monroe. How does that get rid of the gun throwers? Steve will take care of that end of it. 
Here. You take this gun. Larry Monroe's gun. Hello, Steve. What do you have? You know anybody wants to buy a good gun? He looks like the gun I gave Larry two, three years ago. You remember? Not bad. You mind if I take a look at it? Help yourself. I ain't in the market. Nice looking gun. What's it worth? Worth plenty, but I'd be glad to take a $20 gold piece for it. Looks like you sold the gun. Here you are. Much glad. I bet you $2 against a chili pepper. He knows where he's Larry. Of course he does. You're not going to let him leave without telling us where he is, are you? I sure am. And we're going to trail him and find out plenty. It's all set. Before you start anything. No, they're coming. I hear their horses. What's this? Where are the riders? Right behind you. Drop those guns. We don't miss at this distance. Ride herd on these fellows. I'm going after Steve. To do. So you don't want to tell us where you're holding Larry Monroe, huh? We don't know anything about him, I tell you. No, that's too bad. Mike, take one of them down back of that rock. Any particular one, amigo? They all look alike to me. Oh, he's a very nice vest, senor. I think maybe he'd be first, huh? Suit yourself. Hey, what is this? What are you going to do with him, Wade? Exactly what you would do if you were in our place and we were in yours. You better not see this, senor. It's seven year bad luck to watch yourself get shot. Don't shoot yet. You will spoil the vest. You ain't kidding no one. You couldn't shoot a man like this. It's a very far way for you to think, senor. You know, if you believe a thing is so, it is so. Maybe. We see. Still got time to talk, Steve. Depends the way you look at it, senor. Wait. If you kill me, there'll be no one to tell you where Monroe is. So you do know where he is, huh? Sure. I know. 
I'll tell you where he is. You'll do more than that. You'll lead us to him. Mike, put him on his horse. about them. I don't think I am, because a dead man couldn't have a headache like I got. We'll have to leave the horses here, miss. That bridge won't carry them. Well, won't we need our horses on the other side of the bridge? No, ma'am. We're just going the other side of that ridge. Listen. I hear horses. Come on, miss. We've got to keep moving if you want to see your brother Larry. Well, wait. It's Kentucky Wade and his friends. We're not waiting. Come on. Get off that horse. It's Lucy Monroe. What's going on here? That man told me Larry was alive. He promised to take me to him. Cheer up, Lucy. Larry is alive. And this man here has taken us to where they're holding him. Get him off his horse, boys. We go on foot from here. among the rocks. Hey, what's up, man? A lot of shooting up at the bridge. Get your guns in. Come on, boys. Let's go. Come on. Did you get hard, Trigger? Reckon a 45 slug never did any man any good. I think we can get across now. They're going to smash the bridge. We've got to be on the other side before that happens. Me too. You stay here and guard that prison. Come on, Trig. Trigger? Only a chip of rock, I reckon. Better get back to the rocks. No, I'm still drawing cards in this game.
Back on the smashing bridge. You've got to be on the other side before that happens. Me too. You stay here and guard that prison. Come on, Trigg. Only a chip of rock, I reckon. Better get back to the rock. No, I'm still drawing cards in this game. Man. No, no, Lucy, Lucy, you couldn't help them, and you would only get killed. Kentucky, Trigger! You want me to come down for you? We're all right. But watch a gunman across the canyon. Oh, Mike, they're alive. Yes, they're alive. So far. I think I can make that ledge below. If I miss, well, so long, Craig. Trigger. It's safe. Make a run for the bottom. Then we'll be out of range. Keep throwing that, boys. You can't let him get away, Mike. But I've got to stay with my friends, even if he run away two, three times. I'd sort of like to be shot at again so he'd know where them fellas are hiding. So would I, Trigger. They made cover. There's still four trails over this ridge. We can't watch them all. <laughs> Even if they do get across, they'll never find our hideout. They know we're holding Larry Monroe prisoner, and they'll keep hunting till they find him. Well, what are you going to do? If they were sure Larry Monroe wasn't in these hills, they'd turn around and go back, wouldn't they? Yeah, but they... I'm going to convince them Monroe's gone. Come on. Jake and go fetch me Monroe's coat, hat, and scarf. All right. Come on, Jake. Hey, Red. Come here. What do you want? Get fixed up to look like Monroe here. What's this all about? There's a fella about your size going out of these here hills, but it ain't going to be you. Look, Kentuck, there's an old deserted shack down yonder. They're in plain sight, coming along the ridge. Reckon that's where they're holding the area? It seems to me they'd take a place less out in the open. You're right, Craig. There's, there's Larry now. They're getting away with it. We don't dare risk a shot for fear of hitting them. Dude. Not very much, just creased it a little. Kentucky, I think maybe you better take me outside and kick me pretty hard, eh? What for, Mike? What for? That fella Steve is our only clue to the man who's holding Larry, and I let him get away. Don't worry about that, Mike. He won't leave the country. 
Besides, this game is too big for him to quit now. What I don't understand is why they are holding Larry prisoner. Me too. There's only one answer to that. Larry knows something that they want to find out. What are these stones, Lucy? Oh, I don't know. I found them in an old coat of Larry's. I meant to throw them away. Did he ever do any prospecting that you know of? Well, he never said anything to me about it. Why? I was just wondering if... Dude. You stay here with Lucy. The rest of us are going into town to have a little talk with the sheriff. of yours has messed things up again. Meaning Steve. I heard all about it. And you didn't do so good yourself. Who says I didn't? I asked the questions around here. What about Monroe? He's safe in the hideout. But we couldn't get a word out of him about that platinum deposit. Did you tell him it was platinum? Certainly not. But he knows it's valuable. Where Kentucky Wade and his friends? They're right behind you, Keeler. While they're away from the Circle D, is our time to strike. You want to use my Indian friends again, eh? You guessed it. Well, it may not be so easy this time. They're beginning to balk about fighting someone else's battles. You can handle them all right, Buckskin. That's why you're so valuable to me. Thanks, Peter. We found out something that might interest you, Sheriff. Steve Claggett is a member of the outlaw gang that's holding Larry Monroe prisoner. Steve Claggett? Are you sure? We made him admit it and agreed to lead us to the hideout. But before we got in there, he got away from us. Looks like the only way for me to find Larry is to round up Steve. I'm ready to swear out a warrant for him, Sheriff. I reckon it'll be pretty hard to find, so long as you boys are in the district. How are you, Sheriff? Well, I didn't expect to find you all here. Here's an affidavit that clears Larry Monroe of that murder charge. Now you don't need to bother looking for him. You're not going anywhere for quite a while, Claggett. What do you mean? He doesn't want you to look for Larry, because he and his gang are holding him prisoner. I don't know what you're talking about, Kentucky. I'm charging you with the disappearance of Larry Monroe. Arrest him, Sheriff. I'll take your gun, Steve. I ain't aiming to be thrown in no calaboose. Let's find Judge Lawrence and get this settled right now. Suits me. Just so I'm going to the Silver Dollar as we rode into town. charge against them, demanding to be tried right away. Well, I see no irregularity in proceeding at once. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This bar is now closed, and I declare this court officially open. Now, what's the charge? I don't know how to express it legally, Judge, but we know that Steve Claggett here is mixed up in the disappearance of Larry Monroe. Why, that's complicity in a kidnapping. Is that your charge? That seems to cover it, sir. Swear the witness. Hold up your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. What do you know about this, Kentucky? Well, Your Honor, the three of us here corralled Steve, and he admitted that he could take us to the place they were holding Larry Monroe prisoner. Is that true, Steve? Sure, I told him that, Judge. They had a gun on me. I'd have told him anything to save my life. You mean they threatened you? They sure did, Your Honor. I don't know anything about Larry Monroe. 
All I could do was lead him around until I had a chance to make a getaway. Is that true, Kentucky? Did you threaten this man's life? Well, Your Honor, I, I reckon we did, but we didn't mean to kill him. We only... Why, that's coercion. Case is dismissed. Release the prisoner, Sheriff. This court's adjourned. Drinks are on me, boys. Cut him up, Dan. Howdy, boys. Sorry to see your case thrown out on a technicality. I've had my suspicions about that fellow Claggett for some time. We've got more than suspicions, Mr. Keeler. Come on, boys. Let's get back to the ranch. Before you go, I want you to know that my interest in this matter goes further than mere words. Larry Monroe is the type of rancher we need in this valley. I'm doing all one man can to see that he comes back safely. I might like to read that article. If you'll excuse me a moment, I'll be back before we finish it. Can you beat that? He's offering $500 reward for information about the men who kidnapped Larry Monroe. He's not a bad fellow, this senor killer, huh? See that Wade and his friends don't get back to the Monroe ranch today. Redhead, it's men are going to raid it. All right. That's mighty generous of you, Mr. Keeler. Oh, it's not generous at all. The least I can do is see that honest folk in this valley get an even break. Thank you again for Larry and his sister. Uh, won't you have a little... Uh... No, thanks. We've got to be going. We've got a lot to do. Talk same as white man. I have message for your ears alone. Sleep, Buckskin. What do you want? The white chief wants your warriors to attack the Monroe Ranch. All my warriors on buffalo hunt, except these. The white chief promises many rifles if you do what he wants. It shall be done. Take these warriors. I will send smoke signals. To the others. Ah, oh, how? Who will? 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 Who Give him a hand. You bet you my life. Fall for it. Hit 
Here they come. Don't reach for anything. Keep them covered, Bill, till we get their guns. Now, don't talk that way. We'll get you into Brimstone and have a doctor fix you up. Thanks. I'd never make it. But I can trade you even for trying to be white. You boys better hightail it to Monroe's ranch. Pronto. The ranch. Dude is there with Lucy. And dude's gun arms busted. Hit your saddle. Get that man to Brimstone, quick.
Mike makes out.
door in the house. We won't last ten minutes without ammunition. I'll make a dash to the storehouse. No, no, dude. Take you alive, Lucy. Do it. Let me sit the I'm on nothing. We're getting along, the trigger. It looks like Mike isn't coming back. Let's go and get as many of the red devils as we can. Right. They're coming. Yeah. That blood stampeded them. That explosion drove them back, but what caused it? A stray bullet must have hit that power in the storehouse. Don't shoot, it's mine. <laughs> ah, the trick she's worked fine, huh? Yes, and it was my own idea. Kentucky and the boys. Tucky, Trigger, how did you ever do it? We didn't. It was Mike's doing, and a great job, too. Sure, and it was my own idea. Missy, Missy, come quick. Mr. Buck. He don't die. Hit hard, Buck? I'll be all right, thanks. But listen, there's something you ought to know. Just before they downed me, I caught sight of a number of telling them Indians what to do. And he was a white man. A white man? Leastwise, he had on a white man's outfit. That means it wasn't an ordinary Indian attack. There's something in this house they want. He must be one of the men that are holding Larry. We know they're friendly with the Indians. It was white men that tried to keep us from getting here today. Lucy, did Larry keep anything in the house of value? Why, nothing that I know of, except his ranch papers. May I see them? Yes, of course. They're in his desk in a tin box. Brigger? You and dude take care of Buck. You'll find anything of any importance in this. A deed to the Circle D Ranch. A mortgage. What's this? Grant to all that section of land lying in Apache Gulch. Apache Gulch? What would he want with that? It's nothing but rock and sagebrush. There's not a drop of water on it. It's not a homestead claim. It's mineral rights. That's it. You remember those samples of ore you found in Larry's coat? Yes. Well, if you'll check back, all his trouble started that day when he went to the assayer's office in Brimstone. I don't think I understand. What did it mean? It looks like Larry has found some valuable mineral on that land. And somebody knows about it and is trying to make him tell where it is. Oh, he's very bad. What do we do? As soon as I change his shirt, I'm going into Brimstone and check up at that assayer's office. Kentucky's a very smart man.
it around. Circle D. Not a thing, Keeler. Didn't even get inside the door. Why not? Kentucky Wade and his outfit showed Doc, up. I thought I told you to see that Kentucky didn't get to the Circle D. I said for my best man to try and stop him, but Shut I... Shut up! All you're fit for is running a crooked gambling wheel. Now clear out, all of you. I want to talk to Buckskin Loan. Just a minute, Matt. You called this meeting for the regular quarterly payoff, and I'd like mine now. And me too. Well, all right. We'll get it over with. Corey. Yeah. Here's your cut of the horse deal for the past three months. Mighty gratifying. Braden. Yeah. Here's yours for running rifles to the Indians. Here, Driscoll. Cattle rustling pays well when it's done under my protection. You bet. Yours is light this time, Hardy. Silver Dollar didn't do so well. Here's yours, Purpose, for running the assayer's office the way we like it. Thanks, Matt. That's just small change to what we'll clean up if we find that platinum deposit of Monroe's. Yes, sir. There must be some way of making him talk. That's what I want to talk to Buckskin about. I'll see you boys later. All right. So long. So long. All right, kid. Well, I didn't do so good this month. Well... Why not let me turn Larry Monroe over to the Indians? They'll make him talk. Not yet. How about, huh? Here we go. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> you get back to hideout. And if Steve hasn't made Monroe talk, you tell him the Indians have got his sister. He'll know what that means. Kentucky Wade just rode in. He's gone into the assayer's office. And if you ask me, that means he's found out something. Maybe he's found out too much. Buckskin, get on up the hideout. Doc, here's what I want to talk to you about. What are you doing in here? I'm just checking up on some samples of ore left here by Larry Monroe. May I see the report on them? Oh, I didn't bother to make a report. The stuff was worthless. Whoever's trying to steal it from him doesn't think so. Furthermore, they wouldn't have known about it unless you had talked. Oh, you're crazy. Why should I talk about it? There's men in this town that would pay well for that information. hinting that I know who's holding Monroe prisoner? That's <laughs> silly. I'm doing more than that, Purvis. You're going to tell me their names if I have to choke it out of you. Well, I don't know who they are. I tell you, I don't know. Monroe must have talked about it himself. Even his own sister didn't know about it. Now, that don't prove anything, does it? One more chance, Purvis. You tell me where Larry Monroe is or I I'll... Tell you, I don't...
Thanks, Buckskin. I owe you plenty for that shot. That homer getting too close. Did I finish him? Dead as any man will ever get. Where are you bound? Over to the hideout to help Steve suck Monroe. Better ride along. Water. Water? Sure, Monroe. You can have all the water you want. When you tell me where that platinum deposit is. All right, Steve. You win. Untie my hands and I'll draw a map. Nothing doing. You're going to tell me where it is. You'd never find it without a map. OK. I'll untie you. But remember, no funny business. If I take a drink first, go ahead. But don't take all day. It's 
on the road. Quick, we can hang him up. There. That'll teach him not to try to get away from us again. Hold it, Red. That's buckskin. Hello, buckskin. What's Monroe doing out here? Well, I don't know how I got out of the hideout. First thing we knew, he was on his horse and... Wasn't that Kentucky Wade with him? <laughs> yeah, but he won't bother us anymore. Load Monroe on his horse. Baldy and I'll take him back to the hideout. The rest of you go and find Kentucky. Hideout. Be your butt to go back the way we came. Come on.
come on. like the way things are going out here. You've got to make Monroe tell where he found that platinum ore. If I had my way, he'd either tell or quit talking forever. Then we'd never find out where he got his stuff. Must be somewhere on his ranch. Why don't Keeler take it over? We tried. Those gun-throwing friends of Kentucky Wade's drove us off. All right. When this hombre comes to, I'll start working on him again. Been a riding since the break of day. There'll be 20,000 head on the prairie trail. And tomorrow we'll be on our way. Saddles creaking as we're riding home from the roundup on the rain. Tired ponies loafing along while we're singing a song of the sage. Got the cattle bedded and the day's work done, and we're heading home in the evening sun. Feel like singing while we're riding home from the roundup on the rain. Fat and easy in the saddle and a swinging along, singing a song of the same. Sort of looks like the little bird don't appreciate opera, don't it? If I was sure you did that on purpose, I'd... I never said a word, dude. Honest, I didn't. It's the little fella in there. He seems to think you're... <laughs> Here comes Kentucky now. What you find out, Kentucky? For one thing, Larry is alive and well. You saw him? Yes. He was being chased by some men. I tried to help him get away, but my horse went down and they caught him again. Let's go back. We can pick up the trail. Not a chance. We'd run ourselves ragged in those hills and never find him. At least we can try. That's better than doing nothing. There's plenty to do. That a seer in town is one of the outlaw gang that's holding Larry prisoner. We're going in and have a little talk with him. Well, what about Lucy? Is it safe to leave her here alone on the ranch? Don't worry about me. A couple of the fence riders will be coming in this morning for supplies. Anybody been in? Anybody been in? Purvis. Wonder what he wants. Hello, Purvis. Oh, I thought you'd never get here, Keeler. I've been waiting for over an hour. You look worried. I am worried. What about? Oh, Kentucky Wade. He knows I'm mixed up with Monroe's disappearance. Well, what if he does? He can't prove anything unless you talk. And you wouldn't do that, would you? Oh, no, 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 no. Of course not. But I got a hunch he's going to start something. Well, let him. Doc and the boy will be right behind you. That so, Doc? That's right. Well, thanks, fellas. You're taking a load off my mind. You'll get back to the office now and stop worrying. All right. Wade well, wouldn't have much trouble making him talk. He's about ready to break. I'm afraid you're right, Doc. We can't afford to let that happen. I'll have one of the boys take care of it for you if you say the word. I guess that's the only safe thing to do, Doc. Yeah. 
Dice's purpose was living at the door. You better work fast now, Doc. Right. Heading east as fast as horse could go. Pick after him on the fastest horse you can find. Let him go. He won't bother us anymore. Are you sure it's safe? Sure. Afraid he was going, he won't stop this side of the Mississippi. Have a drink and forget him. Funny. It doesn't look like anybody's here. He's more than likely up at the Silver Dollar. Say, what's the matter with Purvis? You gone crazy or something? Why? Run into him a few miles down the road and he sure acted local to me. What'd he tell you? He's nothing. As soon as he seen me coming, he took off across country like he had a bull of lightning on his back. He didn't look like he might circle around head back from Monroe's place, did he? Not a chance. Last I seen him, he was joined up with that wagon train that pulled through here this morning. Tell him what happened, Matt. Buckskin, there's only six of us left to share in that platinum deposit when we get our hands on it. Kino, here's wishing us luck. How long will it take you to get a message to Red Hatchet's camp? About a half hour, maybe, by smoke signal. I'm not going to have the Indians attack the wagon train just to get rid of purpose for you. More than that. Howdy, boys. What do you have? Nothing, thanks. If you're looking for Purvis, have you seen him around? No, I haven't seen him today. Aren't you asking for Purvis? He left town with a wagon train. What route did he take? Heading east through Red Gulch, they told me. Thanks, Mr. Keeler. All right, come on, boys. Are you crazy? He won't draw rain until he overtake that wagon train and get Purvis. Sure. As soon as they join the wagons, that'll be the signal for the Indians to attack. Get that message through to Red Hatchet as fast as you can, Buckskin. Leave it to me. She's a little bit frisky at times, and hold a tight rein on her. Go hear him. Go hear you. I took him. Go ho ho ho. Me a baby church. Go ho.
sure rode square into that one. Yeah, and he took all the fight out of him. Look at him go. Thanks, boy. You sure were worried, Kentucky, when your saddle turned up empty. I was busy in the powder wagon. You blow the war pad right from under the Indians, amigo. <laughs> Anybody see anything of Purvis during the ruckus? I did. He was on the powder wagon, but jumped off just before she blew. Come on, let's ride. The one man who could have told us who's holding Larry Monroe prisoner. And he's through talking forever. You still figure Purvis was one of the men holding Larry? No doubt of it. If his gang is so strong, what did he run away for? My guess is they drove him out to keep him from getting panicked and talking. Well, what's our next move, if any? Mike, you and Dude ride to the ranch and get the deed to Larry's mining claim from Lucy. What for? I think it's best to leave it with the sheriff for safekeeping. We're going in and make a search of Purvis's office. It's a 10 to 1 bet he left something that will set us on the right track. Then we see you in town, yes? Right. Better take Purvis back with us. Miss Elodie, Mark Caldwell, come present first. See what he wants, Chad. Keep your trap shut. Where's Miss Lucy? I said, where is she? A notion talk. And the kids talk to shut the same time. Oh, smart China boy, huh? Well, I'll... Get that gun, cowboy. Pick it up, Chan. Hold it, Chan. And you, miss, drop your gun. What do you men want? Get in that closet. Do as you're told and you won't get hurt. Get in there. Keep your eye peeled for the circle D punchers. Right. I'll search his desk. What does he want? Tell me, fellas. Hello. What's this? Grant to all the land in Apache Gulch. Mineral rocks. That's what we came for. Come on, let's get out. That's Larry's mining grant they've stolen. Stephen Wright heard on Monroe, what did you hear from me? Boys, looks like we get Monroe's platinum deposit whether he talks or not. Oh, yeah? How come? Well, Steve just brought me the government grant of the land that's on. I don't see what good that'll do us. Monroe owns the land and it must be recorded somewhere. Sure. Now we'll produce papers to show that Monroe sold it to Purvis, and Purvis sold it to us. How are you going to do that? Purvis left town. <laughs> Probably dead by now. Well, so much the better. Now he won't be able to deny the sale. You'll find some letters of Monroe's over in Purvis's office. I want a copy of his signature on this paper right here. When I get it, maybe you can guess what I'll write above it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, leave it to me. While you were making a report to the sheriff about Purvis, I'm going to take a look through that essay office. All right, Kentucky.
That signature must mean a lot to you. Kentucky Wayne. Give me that. I said give it to me. Larry Monroe's signature. And you were tracing it. I'm taking you to the sheriff. That suits me. Now, if you'll just sign these two reports, I reckon that'll line up the Purvis case. Being both the coroner and the sheriff, you're going to meet yourself coming back one of these days. <laughs> Howdy, Kentuck. What's been going on here? I didn't know you two men knew each other. We just got acquainted, Sheriff, over in Purvis's office. What's this all about, Tobe? Search me. Before Purvis left town, he asked me to straighten out his papers. I was doing that. And this fellow came in and drew a gun on him. That isn't so, Sheriff. When I found him, he was... Working on Purvis's papers, just like I said. When this fellow jumped me, naturally, I tangled with him. I reckon you acted sort of hasty, Kentuck. Driscoll's our biggest rancher and one of our leading citizens. Looks to me like you owe him an apology. I don't want any apology. But you'll find it a lot healthier if you quit meddling with things that ain't any of your business. Now, when these upright citizens sure pop up in funny places. That's strange. Driscoll's coming from the sheriff's office. I thought he was over at Purvis's. Isn't that Kentucky Wade's horse in front of the jail? I didn't know he was in town. You don't suppose he could have... Things are sure in a mess now. Yeah, it looks that way. What happened to you? Kentucky Wade caught me red-handed in Purvis's office. I bluffed my way through in front of the sheriff, but I didn't fool Wade any. Doc, looks like Wade's got to be taken out of circulation. You remember the Pawnee kid? Yeah. Well, the boys that wound him up are over in the Silver Dollar right now. Good idea. I'll see that Kentucky's where you want him. When you're ready. You better put a saddle blanket on that eye. <laughs> Tip my hat back, I'll be ready. Right. Hello, Kentucky. Well, well. I've been wanting to see you. Didn't know you were in town. Won't you and Trigger join me at the Silver Dollar? That's mighty kind of you, Mr. Keeler. We hadn't figured on stopping, but I don't guess it'll do any harm, eh, Trig? Just what I was figuring. Come along. Better get with it. Need some blank cartridges. I brought some. Anything new in the Larry Monroe case? Not a thing, Mr. Keeler. That's disappointing. I'd hoped that my offer of a reward would bring results. Sometimes I feel that my long fight for law and order and brimstone is hopeless. Excuse me a minute. Sure right thing. Bill C. 
dishonored. I told you we'd meet up again, and when I did, I'd be healed. Now, Rod! Stop those embrace! Back up, you! You trigger. Drop that gun. That isn't what he says, Trigger. just killed a man. Yes, but it was justifiable homicide. Judge Lawrence, you mean you saw it? Yes, Sheriff, I did. This man was up on the balcony there aiming to shoot Kentucky Wade in the back when Kentucky's friend here shot him. I've seen a lot of rattlesnakes plugged in my time, but never one so dead center. Reckon that clears you, Trigger. Thanks, Judge. Go right ahead, boys. Here's your other gun, mister. Some of you fellas owed me a hand. How did you spot that fellow on the balcony, Trigger? You got eyes in the back of your head? No. I was in Dodge City when that same outfit shot down the Pawnee Kid. Oh, you recognized him, huh? Not till they started their gunplay. I knew from the sound they were shooting blanks. That meant it was a fake fight to cover up a killing. So I looked for the killer and found him. It's a mighty good thing for me, Trigger, and I won't forget it. Shucks. I don't like to see nobody shot in the back. Come on, let's ride. Who's coming? Kentucky, the deed you sent us to get has been stolen. Stolen? She got off. When did that happen? Just before Mike and Dude got to the ranch. That explains what Driscoll was doing at Purvis's office. Told Driscoll? Yeah, I caught him tracing Larry's signature. I never suspected he had anything to do with Larry's disappearance. What you tell me now makes me wonder about a lot of things. What do you mean, Lucy? We know they were holding Larry prisoner near Apache Falls. Apache Falls is on Tobe Driscoll's ranch. I never was satisfied with that layout. Let's give it another look. Well, what about Lucy? Lucy's going right with you. Those friends of Larry Monroe just rode up, and they're searching the shack. Let them search. They won't find anything. Yeah, but what if they come in here? They're bound to find Monroe. Keep your eye on them. And if they do find the cave, we'll give them something they're not looking for. I'll just fix you so you can't squawk. I don't see any place around here where they could be holding Larry. Let's give our horses some water and see what's over the ridge. What is it, Kentucky? Looks like somebody just got a pail of water from here. And someone must live in that shack we saw over there. I wonder. Say, that looks like a cave behind the waterfall. It is a cave. Come on. Come 
In here, boys, quick. Get open by that door. What's up, Steve? Kentucky Wade and his bunch are outside. The minute that door starts to open, let them have it. Baldy, you and me will take one around the back way.
Don't tuck your waist and fight around behind it, Steve. Kentucky hasn't got a chance. No, not without this gun. Kentucky way. Did you get away with Monroe? Yeah. Take him over the falls? <laughs> you certainly did. I knocked him up. Are you crazy? If you kill Monroe, that ends our chance of finding the location of his platinum discovery. What else could it do? Kentucky was getting away with him. Is he alive, Kentucky? Can't let him take our three boys to the sheriff, that's certain. Well, how are you going to stop him? No guns. We'll find some way to do it without guns. Come on, let's get the horses. Well, he's still breathing, but I'm afraid he's stove up pretty badly. You folks better start from the ranch with him. Mike, you and I will take the prisoners then and bring back a doctor. Si, senor. This looks like it might be our chance to get Monroe back again. What good will that do us if they take their prisoners to the sheriff and he sweats the truth out of them? Well, I keep telling you we can't do anything without guns. If they take the trail through the narrows, I got a hunch we can stop them. Trigger, you head for the ranch and bring back a buckboard for it. Good idea. Dude, I'll meet you this side of Apache Gulch. All right, Trigger. That's a narrow path where the trail turns. A good place to stop them. Give the signal. Up the seat. All right. Say that for the fellow that hit you. It's you, Kentucky. What's happened? Where's the prisoners? They're too far off for us to catch now. We might as well head on into town. Head for Driscoll's ranch. I'm going to town to report. I was 
to see what Buxton can do with a knife. My money's on Slim. So is mine. Just to avoid arguments when it comes time to pay up, this here ring's a target. And the distance is 10 paces. Is that right? That's the rules. And Slim's to throw first. Take over the killer. Why don't you take it over to him yourself? He's over in his office. I don't think he'll want to be seen with me much after he hears the news. What is it? Sounds bad. I'll go see what Keeler wants to do about it. Wait here. something to be. Didn't leave me much room to put my knife in the center of that ring, did you? Dead Sunday. Oh, oh, that's hard oh, to oh. Be. Huh? What a throw. Satisfied, Slim? You've got to be. I can throw a knife straighter than most men can shoot. Reckon it's the engine in it. Oh, uh, Buckskin. Buckskin. If you see Gory, tell him I'd like to see him in the news office. It's important. I'll tell him. It's the last time I call an engine an engine. Anybody showing up yet, Shelley? All of them? Good. Steve just got in town. He says Kentucky Wade found our hideout and got away with Larry Monroe. That's bad. Bad? That's the end as far as I'm concerned. What do you mean by that, Brayton? Well, we were doing all right until we tried to grab off Monroe's platinum discovery. Why don't we forget it? Brayton's right. Why lose all we got by trying to grab something we can't handle? That's the part of what million. We'd be fools to toss it away now. I'm willing to toss my share of it right now. Not getting scared, are you, Driscoll? Well, not scared. Either. And stand pat. We can't quit now we know that platinum deposit is somewhere on Apache Gulch. You couldn't find it in that bunch of hills unless you had the whole town looking for it. By George, that's an idea. We'll get the whole town looking for it for us. Here. Have one of the men bring these nuggets into town. Tell the world he just found them in Apache Gulch. Why, that'll start a gold rush into the district where Monroe found the platinum. Of course. Then he'll have to record its exact location for fear someone will file on it ahead of him. Yeah, and when Monroe files on it legally, the platinum belongs to him, not us. Well, I guess we've got enough hired gunmen to take care of that situation. Well, you may be right at that. It's worth trying anyway. Mexican friend just rode in, Matt. You go around at the doctor and head for the ranch with him. What about you? Don't wait for me. My business with the sheriff may take too long. Mr. Wayne. I knew it. It's a 10 to 1 shot. They're looking for me. Take it easy. They'll never look for you here. Yes, but they're going into the sheriff's office. Tell about finding Monroe a prisoner on my ranch. Oh, forget it. When that gold rush starts, it doesn't matter what they tell.
demonios, los niños. Oh no, you stay right there. It's hard to believe, Kentuck. Toby Driscoll's the biggest rancher in the valley, and mighty well thought of. I know. But you can't get away from the fact that Larry Monroe was held prisoner on Driscoll's ranch. Turn this fellow over to the sheriff. I'm heading for Apache Ghost. Sure. Well, I see you made a mess of things again.
ought to take them any farther. Horseback, Lucy. I don't see why Trigger hasn't met us with the buckboard. He won't be back here inside of a half an hour. Oh, poor Larry. Let's rest him. I hear wagon wheels. Sounds like a stampede. Oh, it's wagons on their short travel. Oh, dude, look! They're heading right toward us. We've got to get Larry out of here. Head for those rocks. I'll cinch my saddle and follow.
was that stampede about? A gold rush. Gold rush? Yeah. Some Jasper rode in with a handful of nuggets. Said he found them in a patch of gold. Well, but that's where Larry had his platinum deposit. Do you suppose there's gold there, too? No, ma'am, I don't. I think the whole thing is a fake. Started by the same gang that's trying to find out where Larry found his ore. Well, what good would that do him? Some prospector might be unlucky enough to find it. Then the outlaw gang would run him off with their hired gunman, is that it? That's my guess. I was riding out to try and stop them before anybody could find it. We'll be all right till Trigger gets here with a buckboard. Oh, there comes Trigger now. Hurry, Kentucky. be something, but tis not gold. How do you know? How do I know? I, I've been in every gold strike since 49, and I tell you it ain't gold. Looks like gold to me, and I'm going to file a claim on it. I'm sorry, man. Gold or no gold, you can't file claims in Apache Gulch. Who says we can't file claims in Apache Gulch? The law says so. If you think you can run us off our claims, you're badly mistaken, mister. I'm not here to run you off. I'm only trying to keep you from making fools of yourselves. Apache Gulch belongs to Larry Monroe by special grant from the government. You never recorded it. I'd give a lot to know who told you that. Uh, if it ain't recorded, we got as much right to it as he has. I'm not arguing that, but I say this. There's no gold in Apache Gulch. We saw the nuggets. Oh, yeah. Johnny Foster brought them in. He may have shown you nuggets, but they didn't come from Apache Gulch. If Foster had a claim here, he'd be sitting on it with a gun across his knee. But he stayed in town. Uh, the whole thing don't make sense. Don't put anybody be starting a gold stampede just for the fun of it. No. There is something of value in this gulch, but it isn't gold. There's a gang in town who wants it and can't find it. So they started this stampede hoping you folks might find it for them. When you draw him, drop him. Here's some of the men that started the stampede. I reckon they'll talk if we handle them just right. Sure, let's go. Been a rounding up the herd for the cattle drive. Been a riding since the break of day. There'll be 20,000 head on the prairie trail. And tomorrow they'll be on our way. Saddles creaking as we're riding home from the roundup on the range. Tired of ponies loping along while we're singing a song of the sage. Got the cattle bedded and the day's work done. And we're heading home in the evening the sun. Feel like singing while we're riding home from the roundup on the range. Sat and easy in the saddle and a swinging along. Singing a song. Why, I didn't know you could sing like that, Chang. In fact, I never knew anybody could. What's the idea always spoiling that song? It wasn't me, dude. Honest. Why, I can't even talk Chinese, let alone sing it. Why, I ought to take you and give us some more, dude. I like it. 
Larry! Don't go rental! <laughs> oh, Larry, you really shouldn't be up. You'll overexert yourself. If he does, I'll have dude time in his chair with that re <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll be good. Steve Claggett had me tied up long enough to last me the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, by the way, Larry. Yeah? Was Steve the only one of the gang you recognize? Yes. I never saw any of the rest of them before. I guess we'll hear their names before long. Steve's in town in jail. In jail? How come? Well, we kind of tangled yesterday, and he lost. Dude and I are going in and ask him a few questions. Wait, I'll go get my guns. No, no. You and Trigger stay here with Larry. Morning, Kentucky. Morning, Sheriff. Howdy, young fellow. Morning. We just drove in to have a little talk with Steve Claggett. Sorry, Kentucky, but nobody seems to know where Claggett's hiding out. I got my deputies out looking for him now. Why, I turned him over to Keeler. Did he break jail? No, he never got here. He slugged Keeler and made a clean getaway. I'm going to have a little talk with Mr. Keeler. Come on, dude. Oh, good morning, Mr. Wade. Hello, Keeler. I was just reading about you. See what folks around here think of you, don't you? Patchy Gulch, Gold Rush of Hopes. Kentucky Wade, hero of clash with angry prospectors. Risks life to save friends clean. <laughs> well, kind of spreading it on pretty thick, aren't you, Mr. Keeler? Not the way they told it to me. Oh, did you hear about Steve Claggett? The sheriff just told me. How'd he get away from him? Just my own carelessness, I guess. I never was much of a hand with a gun, and uh, I got too close to him with it. He took a chance, knocked the side, hit me behind the ear, and next thing I know, he was riding up the street using both spurs and a quirt. Looks like every lead we get blows up. Seems so, Kentucky. Well, I'm sorry to have been the cause of this one, but I have an idea the sheriff's men will bring him in. I hope so. See you later. Now what? I'm going down and have another talk with the sheriff. You see if you can pick up any gossip at the saloon. That's an idea. Say, Matt. Uh, what's the idea of making a hero out of this fellow? What do you mean? Oh, we heard you. While well, you're setting him in so sudden this town, we'll never be able to tear him down. Well, as long as I praise him, he's not likely to get any funny notions about me and my friends, is he? No, I suppose not. Now that I know where Wade is, I guess it's safe to start Steve out of town. Bucks in. Take Steve out of town the back way and hide him out in the Indian village. That's not such a good idea. Red Hatch is pretty sore about not getting the rifles you promised him for the last job. All right, get 50 guns over at Braden's. But don't let anyone see you load them. They look bad. Out the back way. Trouble spending, I reckon. Boy, I don't spend my money. Saving it up for a rainy day? Oh, shucks, I don't mind the rain. I'm saving up to buy my rifle so as I can go buffalo hunting. Want to see it? It's over at the hardware store, and boy, it's hit a cracker. 30 30. I think I have seen it. How much do you need? Well, I need a lot more. I need $2 more. $2? Boy. You better hurry over and buy it. Oh, gee, mister, I reckon I'd better not take that much money from you, but if you could sort of lend it to me and 
You wait here, I'll slip out the back and have her back here in a jiffy. All right, son. <laughs> Well, did you get a lead? Not a thing. Neither did I. Might as well get back to the ranch. I can't. I'm waiting for a friend. A friend? Oh, just the boy that plays the mouth organ here in the saloon. Here's your two dollars, mister. Right? Been sold. Hardware store ought to have more than one rifle in stock. He usually does. He had 50 of them this morning. He just sold them all. Fifty rifles at a crack? Who bought them? I don't know, but I saw Steve Claggett drive away with a wagon load of them about a month or so ago. Think it means gun running to the Indians? It can't mean anything else. And Steve Claggett is just the sort to get mixed up in a thing like this. Let's get out of here. What do you aim to do, Kentucky? We are going to beat those rifles to Red Hatch's camp, if these horses hold out. Wade found out about those guns, and he's trading them to Red Hatch's camp to get Steve Claggett. They get him, they'll make him talk. Get someone out there ahead of him by Devil's Pass. Tell Buckskin, he'll know how to stop him. Right. White Chief promised. It is well. The White Chief remembered. Rifles are welcome. It's Foster. Something must have happened. Doc sent me. Said to get Steve undercover quick. Kentucky Wade's after. Kentucky Wade. Buckskin. We've got to do something to stop him. Listen, if you do as I tell you, we'll have Kentucky Wade where we want him. Thank you. He want a town. Town him. Be home. Take care of his soul. No, his dinner is going down the way you are. Now, honey. Hey, Buck, what's the We're sure in luck. The Indians are going off on a hunt or something. Doesn't look like they're wasting any time trying out those new rifles. Right here. Right. Things sure worked out like you said, Kentucky. Steve's down there in the camp. See him near the fire? I don't like the look of that dude. The Indians never cook with a smoky fire. Looks like that squaw's more interested in making smoke than cooking vittles. Yeah, and that's not Steve. Steve never smoked. You're right. It's some sort of a trick. Hey, 
Now I know that smoke means trouble. Back to your horse, Prano. Oh, Nino! We're not burning! He's getting away with the horses. Don't you? You'll have them down on us. After me, head for camp. Look, dude. A way to stop them. Buy that brush, then they can't follow you. That's an idea. You went this way, all right. Looks like we're trapped. There's a break we can get through. Too late, dude. We can't make it. Head back for the rock. Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. Kentucky. What's the matter, dude? Oh, I hurt my leg, Kentucky. Come on, we've got to get out of here. Save yourself. Hang on. We'll get out of here yet.
Spread north of South Kentucky. Looks like we're trapped. There's a break we can get through. Really, dude. We can't make it. Head back for the rock. Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. Kentucky. What's the matter, dude? Oh, I hurt my leg. Come on, we've got to get out of here. Oh, I can't make it, Kentucky. Save yourself. Hang on. We'll get out of here yet. You uh, bring them uh, two white men? Two white men, Kentucky and dude, burn up canyon fire. I go tell Red Hatchet to start dance for victory and death. So. I told Steve Plackett to get out of town, Killer. I did. I told him to stay on the cover at the Indian camp. Look. I'll teach that gun to do as he's told. Come on. Hello, Matt. Hello, Hello there. How are you, sir? Hello, Killer. How are you, Doc? Hey, have you gone crazy? The running of Kentucky Wade would ruin our setup in Paradise Valley. Don't worry. Wade can't prove anything. No? Why can't he? He knows you've been running guns to the Indians, and he can prove it. Kentucky Wade can't prove anything, I tell you. He's dead. Dead? Are you sure? I've seen him with my own eyes. Him and his pal dude got caught by fire in a box canyon. They never come out. Well, that leaves only two of the outfit to be reckoned with. Trigger and the Mexican. Yeah, and they're probably at the ranch guarding Larry Monroe and his sister. With Kentucky gone, I reckon they'll be ready to give up the fight. Well, I guess I'll put things back on the stove for Kentucky and Dude. That's a good idea. Now, don't you worry. They'll be here soon. I bet you. If they're not back in a half an hour, Mike, I'm riding to Brimstone. Yes, and I go with you. There's someone coming now. I've got this paper in town. There's bad news in it. About Kentucky and Dude. Give me that. Oh, Trigger. What is it? Read it, Trigger. Tragedy in Fox Canyon. Indians report death of two men in brush fire. Kentucky Wade and companion perish in flames. They recognize Kentucky by his white horse. And the man with him must have been doomed. Kentucky dead. I can't believe it. There's something wrong here. Kentucky was too range-wise to get himself trapped in the canyon fire. What are you driving at, Trigger? I bet he was bushwhacked. And the fire started to cover the killing. I get my gun and we go look in that canyon. Take it easy, boys. Kentucky! Kentucky! There's nothing in that canyon worth bothering about. <laughs> don't believe all you're reading the papers. But don't tell anybody we said so. Better sit down, Larry, and take care of yourself. Oh, I'm all right. Figured the newspaper had it all wrong. Not as wrong as you think, Trigger. There was plenty of fire in that canyon, but our horses found their way out, and we trailed them. You ain't telling you he carried me out. Oh, do. Yeah, but where have you fellas been? Didn't you know we'd be worried? We hid among the rocks until sundown, because we want some folks to keep on believing what they read in that newspaper. Meaning the outfit that's trying to run off Larry? Yeah, and I know it's the same outfit because Steve Claggett is mixed up in it. I see. You're gonna lie low and let them come out in the open, is that it? That's the idea. Yes, but where are you going to do this lie low business? The perfect spot for it is back of the waterfall on Driscoll's Ranch. Yeah, but they know about that place. That's where Steve Claggett held me prisoner. Exactly. 
They know that we found you there, and that's one spot they're going to fight shy of. Ah, he's a good idea. You know, sometimes I think... Would it have meant much to you if that newspaper story was true? Well, I do. You know, I think you're... <laughs> <laughs> sure is a reader of character. <laughs> That's Lawrence. We'll ask him. It's a good idea. Hello, boys. Morning, Judge. What's this? I'm sorry to hear about Kentucky. We need men like him around here. Thank you, Judge. They told us at the newspaper office that Mr. Keeler was over here. Have you seen him? Why, yes, sir. There he is now, just coming out that back room. Hello, Mr. Keeler. Nice to see you. Morning, Mr. Keeler. Good morning. Reckon you remember us. Of course. We're your friend of Kentucky Way. Can't tell you how sorry I am. That's what we came in to see you about. We thought maybe you could tell us where we could find what's left of Kentucky and do. We want to put up a little monument for them before we go away from Paradise Valley. Are you leaving Paradise Valley? Yes. We've got no more business around here now that they're dead. Well, I understand how you feel. Man brought in the story at the faro table over there. I'll bring him over. Thanks. You know something? When you talk about Kentucky as being dead, I nearly want to cry. Reckon I did pretty good. Good? You are the most grandest mentiroso I ever know. Thanks, Mike. Hey, what's a mentiroso? He's a big liar. This is Buckskin Frank, who's friendly with redheads in stripe. How are you, Buckskin? Did you see the accident? I didn't see it myself, but the Indians told me your friends were trapped by fire at Elderbush Canyon, about a mile north of their village. Thanks. Excuse the left hand. Put your arm? Uh, horse through. They'll do that sometimes. Well, thanks again. And thank you, Mr. Keeler. Go, Mike. Hello, Doc. Have a drink? Well, it's seldom refused. Well, I reckon we put it over. Mr. Keeler will put in his newspaper that we're leaving town. Sure, and the bunch that's after Larry's ranch will make the next move. Hi, kid. I've got to see you. It's about Kentucky. Wait outside at the side window. Here you are, kid. Better get moving, Buckskin. There's no hurry. Indian smoke signals travel faster than any horse. Long before they get to Elderbrush Canyon, Red Hatchet's warriors will be waiting for them. All right, do it your way, but do it now. Well, so long. So long. I believe this fellow Buckskin had something to do with Kentucky and dude being burned up in a fire. What makes you say that, kid? Because Kentucky and dude were following him and Steve Plaggett when they were killed. I believe the kid's right, Mike. That Indian Kentucky shot must have been Buckskin. Sure. That's why he don't shake with his right hand. He said the horse throw him. But it's the bullet wound in the shoulder. How do you know he shot Buckskin? Why, well, you fellas talk like Kentucky's still alive. If he was alive, kid, would you keep your mouth shut? I sure would, Mr. Trigger. You tell Kentucky he can trust me. So do we, kid. See you later. Come on, Mike. We can still catch him. So long, fellas. Oh, hello, Mr. Hardy. <laughs> Wait a minute. What have you been up to? What were you telling them? I wasn't just saying goodbye. Don't lie to me. I heard them say they were going to catch somebody. Who were they talking about? I ain't telling you nothing. Trigger and the Mexican are wise. They just started out to get buckskin. 
Are you sure? Positive. We've got to work fast. Get as many men as you can trust and get them started. Right. There he is, Mike. Aha! He's building fire to make the smoke signal. They got buckskin already. Come on. His gun's empty, Mike. Now we'll get him. What's the idea of attacking me? What was that smoke signal that you were sending? That's my business. Don't worry. I make him talk, Tinker. Get away from me. What are you trying to do? <laughs> Hold him tight, Tinker. These make you talk. Stop that, you coyote. Oh, so I'm a coyote, huh? <laughs> Trigger, I can't do this very much more. It tickled me too. <laughs> Let's tie him up and get him behind those rocks. Quick, mate. Get out, not cover. Get behind us, Mike. We're through. We've got an idea. Keep them thinking we're both here. Si, si, amigo. wasn't turned, I'd let you have it. There's another one behind those rocks, Mike. Go get him. She see him, Eagle. Get going. Trouble, Trig. Just a little target practice, Kentuck. How many rattlers were there in that nest? Four of them. I tromped on one, and Mike's bringing in the other one. Well, I guess that's a lot. Thought you fellas were at the cave and back at a waterfall on Driscoll Ranch. We started there, but got to worrying about you. So we headed for Brimstone, just in case you might need us. When we heard the shooting, we came to see what was up. How did you get into this ruckus, anyway? We tell you when we get to the hideout. First, we have a big surprise for you. Yeah. We got still another prisoner tied up over there in those rocks. I'll go get the prisoner.
pues cómo se ha ido? He can't be wrong. Get talking. Get talking. He's gone. He's run away. No use, boys. He's made a clean getaway. Get those armors on their horses and head for the hideout. is all blocked up. It looked like she came in. More than likely, the outfit that was holding Larry Monroe prisoner here blew it up to cover their tracks. There's that deserted old shack over there. Why not use that? Say, that's a good idea. Here's something else to sit on. Kind of heavy. No wonder it's powder. Sure enough, it is powder. Probably what's left after they blew up the cave. Well, we're good enough to sit on anyway. Now you polecats are going to tell us who you're working for. You heard me. Who's your boss? I ain't telling you nothing. You'll talk before we get through with you. Is that so? If I wasn't hogtied and you didn't have that gun on, you wouldn't do so much talking. I kind of like that idea. I'm fine, Trigger.
Wolf's a blaze. Every shot count. Don't shoot until they find us. scared the Indians off. They've run off with our horses. Maybe the explosion stampeded them. I'll whistle for Starlight. He'll bring back the others. <laughs> Looks like they've got your horses, boys. Here comes Starlight all by himself. How are we going to get these umbries into the sheriff? I'll ride to the ranch and bring back some horses. saloon in town. I'm a friend of Kentucky Wade. Kentucky? Has something happened to him? I don't know, but Doc Hardy sent some men to get Trigger and do. That's the reason to come to see your brother, to get help. Are you sure about that, kid? Larry, you shouldn't have. I'm all right, Lucy. When did this happen? About two hours ago. Trigger and Dude was heading for the Indian camp to get buckskin, and Doc sent his men to stop him. Get my horse, Chan. Larry, you mustn't. You're not fit to ride. I've got to. Roxy, Roxy, Kentucky. She come. Kentucky. Kentucky. What are you doing 
and your kid? Trigger and due to ride against the trouble. I thought we all be right. Mike and I came along in time to help them capture the men that were after them. Capture? Well, there's some of Doc Hardy's best gun throwers. Doc Hardy? You mean he sent them? Sure, I heard him. So Doc Hardy's the head of the outfit that's been trying to run me off the Circle D. Now he's out to get you and the boys because you're friends of mine. Did Doc Hardy see you come out here, kid? Nobody saw me leave town. Good. Will you do something for me? You bet. Get back to town and keep your eye on Doc. We'll get some horses over to the boys and be in as soon as possible. I'm on my way. Bye, Miss Lucy. Bye. You're taking horses to the men? What about the ones ahead? Buckskin and a bunch of Indians ran them off. Buckskin again? Yeah. There's no doubt now that he's part of Doc Hardy's outfit. Watering grain, Pete. Okay, Buckskin. Hello, Buckskin. Howdy, Doc. Killer and the boys are waiting for you. Well, I've got good news for them. Hello, Killer. Go on inside. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, come on, Matt. You know we're all anxious to hear what Buckskin has to say. You'll hear Buckskin's report when I'm ready to have you hear it. Hey, Charlie, see that this gets in today's issue. All right, Buckskin, let's have it. Well, you've seen the last of Kentucky Wade in his outfit. So you finally got them. <laughs> Yeah. I blew them up in that line rider shack at Trisco's Waterfall. You blew them up. What happened to the boys I sent out to get them? Sorry, Doc, but they didn't do so good. Kentucky Wade's boys were holding them prisoners in that shack at the time. You didn't do anything to get them out? What did I do? I had my orders. Why, you? Shut up, Doc. The important thing is, Kentucky Wade's outfit is through. Yeah, and with them out of the way, we'll soon get our hands on Larry Monroe's platinum mine. Seem to forget we haven't the slightest idea where Monroe found that platinum oil. Say, Matt, I've got an idea how we can drive Monroe out into the open. How's that? Well, Monroe had his horse round up yesterday. Yeah. He's got about 1,500 head of horses on his home range, with only a few punchers holding them for the drive. Now, we can run them off easy. Ah, what's Monroe's horse has got to do with his mind? He needs money bad. That's why he's selling his horses. I get it. If we run them off, it'll bankrupt him. Sure. Then he'll have to record his mind to save the ranch. And when he does, we'll jump it. Go do it. Handle it your own way, Toby. All right, Doc. Round up all the gun throwers you can find for me. I'll need them. Yes, sir. Six beside myself, why? Get them over to Driscoll's ranch. We're running off on Rose horses. Hadn't I better leave a couple of them here in case you need them? No, I'll take them all. It's the boss's order. It's good enough for me. Oh, that fellow's riding. He must be sick. Sick or wounded. It's a mouth organ, kid. I was hoping I'd run across you, Kentucky. I told Driscoll's going to run off all of Larry Monroe's stock. Driscoll? Trigger, bring your canteen of water, quickly. Water will 
be much good. Kinta. Doc Hardy is too good of a shot. Doc Hardy? Did he shoot you? Here you are, Kentucky. You won't need it now, Trigger. about that now, Sheriff. I just came in to tell you that I've got three prisoners tied up in Cottonwood Flats. I'll make charges against them later. Why didn't you bring him in? I've got some private business to attend to first. The mouth organ kid has just been murdered. The mouth organ kid? Who killed him? That's what I'm going to find out. Wait a minute, Kentucky. I'm deputizing you to bring in the killer of the mouth organ kid. Dead or alive. Kentucky Wade. We heard you'd been. Hiya, Kentucky. What do you have? A little information. Where is Doc Hardy? Why, well, I don't know. I haven't seen him. Looking for me, Kentucky? Yeah. What's on your mind? The mouth organ kid works for you, doesn't he? Oh, yes. He must be around here someplace. Quit your stalling. You know where he is, and so do I. Kentucky Wade. So you never miss, do you, Buckskin? I don't think I got you. Oh, yes, you do. He's dead. Dead? And you killed him. Shot him down in cold blood. And you're going to pay for it. Ah, quit the round. Have a drink. <laughs> Happen, Keeler. I know it, Judge. I was here all the time. From what I heard, he deserved to be shot. But who do you suppose could have done it? The man I thought Doc Hardy was. What do you mean, Kentucky? I came in here believing Doc Hardy was top hand in the outfit that's been robbing and murdering in the Paradise Valley. But I was wrong. 
There's somebody higher up. I get it. He had Doc killed to keep him from talking. Got any idea who he is? Not yet. But I'm not going to stop until I find out. Where do you think is these rustlers? The horses are on the south range, so that's where they'd head for. Hadn't we better ride over and warn Larry? No. He's in no shape to get in a fight. Besides, all these riders are with the herd. Everything all right, Jack? No. I'm dying for smoke and I've run out of matches. Oh, it serves you right. There's only five of them circle deep punches of that horse herd. Good. Let's move in on them. No, we got to wait for the signal. Give Steve time to plug up that gap in the canyon. I know I was going to have to build fence. You're here to do as you're told. Our job is to turn them horses so they'll run through Apache Gulch into the Badlands. I guess that'll hold them. Now we can let Driscoll know we're ready. There's the signal. Get going. Driscoll. Get busy. <laughs> Sounds like we're too late. Came from over there. Knock on him. for Apache Gulf. If they bring him into Badlands, we will never get them back. They won't do it without a fight. Hey, somebody's shooting at him. The more that circle D option, the more of you after him. They're sure coming. Way. Now's our chance. Get up behind those rocks and don't miss.
Milky Way. That's our chance. Get up behind those rocks and don't miss. Stampede? Sure. How? Oh. Or someone built the fence in the wrong place and I fix it. What's all the shooting? Dude and Trigger are fighting Driscoll's men. And this fella Driscoll is the one who started this thing. Come on. Got your punchers on the run. You chase them, boys. The men we really wanted in Trimstone. Get your horse. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do about it. Nope, we're wasting our time here. We better go tell Keeler about this. What'd you find? Oh, nothing. Let's get going. Nothing, eh? This is the stuff that Monroe brought into your sale. It's, it's platinum, that's what it is. Platinum? You must be crazy, Steve. That can't be platinum. Don't you suppose I know platinum when I see it? This is the main vein. The stuff that Monroe found was washed down into Apache Gulf from here. Let's cover this up and go back and tell Keeler about it. Why tell Keeler? Let's make it a two-way split. It's risky business, double-crossing Keeler. Worth it, ain't it? I'll put in with you. What's our next move? Get the Circle D away from Larry Monroe. Good idea, Driscoll. Let's head for the Monroe Ranch, pronto. I just saw a bunch of rustlers running off your horse herd. You must be mistaken. Those were my boys moving the herd. I tell you, they were rustlers. 
I was cutting across toward Brimstone, and I heard shooting down in Apache Gulch. I rode over and saw them shooting down your boys and running off the herd. Oh, Larry, every dollar we have in the world is tied up in that herd. Miss Ernie, Miss Ernie, what's up with it? Oh, Larry, it's Buck. He's been shot. Get some water, Lucy. Rusters, Larry. Kentucky and the boys and run down those rustlers. Please don't, Larry. It only means more good men like Buck being shot down on our account. I won't stand it. I can't bear it. I guess you're right, Mrs. Thanks for all your trouble, Driscoll. And you can spread the word in town that the Circle D is for sale. I'm sorry, Larry. But if you've made up your mind to sell, I'll take the Circle D off your hands. That's mighty decent of you, Driscoll. But I ought to warn you, whoever buys the Circle D buys a mess of trouble. <laughs> well, I'll take that gamble. That is, if your price is right, how about $5,000? But, Larry, it would give us a start somewhere else. I'll take it, Driscoll. All right. You ride into the bank with me, we'll close the deal today. I'll be back before sundown, sis. Bye, Miss Lucy. Bye. They are too late to save them. But at least it didn't get away with the horses. The horses are safe? Then Driscoll was lying. Driscoll? Was he here? Yes, Larry just sold him the ranch. They've gone into Brimstone to sign the papers. Why, it was his men that tried to rustle our horses. I'm riding into Brimstone. Oh, Chang, get me a shirt. And we're going with you. Listen, if that deal goes through, Driscoll and his men will be riding here to take over the ranch. And you boys stay here and keep him off. Take letting Driscoll run Monroe's horses out into the Badlands. Old Red Hatchet would have done a lot of jobs for us for that many horses. <laughs> All I've done is drive him out near his village. Tell him to send out a party of warriors, and then he'll get Steve! So Monroe's punchers got you. No. Driscoll shot me. Driscoll? Out of the argument. We found Monroe's platinum mine. You found it? So it was an Apache Gulch. No, it's on Monroe's ranch. Driscoll wanted me to throw with him and double cross you. And when I turned him down, he let me have it. But where's Driscoll now? He's over at the bank with Monroe, buying his ranch. Look, you can get the boys together and tell Charlie to look after Steve. Right, sir. I think you'll find these exactly right. $5,000, Larry, is that right? That's right. Do you mind witnessing this, Mr. Dawson? Not at all. Hello, Larry. Howdy, Joe. Howdy, Matt. Hello, Keeler. Glad to see you in town again. How's things in Circle D? Better ask Driscoll. I just sold it to him. Well, this is news. I congratulate you, Tobe. But I hate to see a good rancher like Monroe leave Paradise Valley. We need his kind around here. Huh. Well, I guess I wasn't good enough, Mr. Keeler. They finally drove me out. Drove you out? Yeah. Well, how'd it happen? You can ask Driscoll. He happened to see it. He did? Over at the office, Tobe, and give me the whole story. 
I got a lot of things to do, Matt. Uh, you I... can attend to them later. This story affects every rancher in the valley. Go ahead, Driscoll. I have some business to attend to with Mr. Dawson. I can see you later. Well, all right. So long, Driscoll. So long. You mind giving me a Wells Fargo check for this? Not at all. Got some great news for us, boys. Good. That's right. We own Monroe's Ranch now. Got it for a song. Sit down, Tob, and tell us about it. Horse drive didn't turn out the way we planned. But it gave me a chance to trick Monroe into selling the Circle D. What about Apache goats? Monroe wouldn't sell that. Then you didn't get the platinum. No. You lion double cross. Steve! Why? Thought I was dead, didn't you? You always were a bad shot, Driscoll. So you thought you could get the platinum for yourself and double cross us? No, Matt. I didn't. Steve can't back up what he says. Steve has backed it up. For these. You thought you could double cross us, Driscoll. And you know what that means. Get away from that door, Steve. The rest of you keep your hands up where I can see them. Not here. Wait till he gets out of town. about him. Don't lie. I know he went into town with you to sell you his ranch. Well, suppose he did. I paid him his price and he's got the money. And you've got the deed on you. You forced that sale, Driscoll, and you're not going to get away with it. You can't do this, Wade. It's robbery. You'll get your money back when we get into Brimstone. Now get up and get on your horse. I've got to shut that half beat up or we'll both get killed. about that.
Is there anything you'd like to tell me before you kick out? Yes, tear up that deed to the Circle D Ranch. We didn't give Monroe an even break. Who else is in this besides you? There was Purvis and Doc Hardy and Buckskin and... and... Get 
Ну. that a smart man like you would fall for as old a trick as that one. You can't get away with this, Wade. I got plenty of friends. They'll never find you where I'm taking you. Now get on your horse. Uh. Get going. You recognize the place? Made a pretty good jail when you and your outfit held Larry Monroe prisoner here. Now let's see how you like it. Can't get in there, it's blocked up. Well, you blocked it up. Now tear it down. This is the same chair you kept Larry Monroe tied up in. Remember? Go on. You pay for this, Wade. Oh, no. You're all wrong, Buckskin. You're the one that's going to pay. I'm leaving you for a little while, but you'll be here when I get back. I'm glad you hadn't left town, Larry. That's why we're finally going to get some action that counts. Ah, it's too late to do me any good. I sold my ranch and Driscoll's got the deed. And Driscoll did have it, but I've got it now. How did you get it? Buckskin killed Driscoll, but before he died, he told me plenty. You were tricked into that sale, Larry. Driscoll gave me the deed, told me to tear it up so he could go out with a clean slate. Is Judge Lawrence inside? Yeah. Come on. Hello, Wade. Hi, Larry. Hello, Hi. Keeler. Have a little something? No, thanks. I'm sort of a hurry. Oh, oh uh, anything might make news for the paper. I go to press today. I might have, after I talk to Judge Lawrence. Well, see you later. You sure will. Good morning, Wade. How are you, Larry? Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Hi, Kentuck. Good morning, Sheriff. Hello, Larry. Hi. Could we have a word with you in private? Why, certainly, certainly. Wouldn't mind, would you, Hill? Not at all, Judge. We've got a little job to do, Judge, and we need your help to make it legal. Stick around, Steve. I may need you in a hurry. We caught Buckskin and holding him prisoner outside of town. Well, if you captured Buckskin, why didn't you bring him into town and turn him over to the sheriff? He'd never reach a court, Judge. His partners would see to that, even if they had to shoot him while he was in jail. Have you got any idea who his partners are? Driscoll named some of them, but I can't prove it because he's dead. There's only one thing to do. Bring Buckskin to trial and make him talk. The only way to do that is to try him out of town, out where we're holding him prisoner. Where have you got him? In the cave back of the waterfalls on Driscoll's ranch, where Claggett held me prisoner. 
hide to the Indian village, quick. Take a bunch of Indians to the old hideout. Wade's holding Buckskin there to sweat him. Old Red Hatchet won't send out his warriors just because I tell him to. You have to. Buckskin's his own cousin. Go on. Oh, that's a bit too irregular, Wade. Why not let me take him into Yuma? Buckskin's crowd can't pike a jury there. That's a good idea, Sheriff. Huh? When do we start? Right now. Thanks, Judge, for your advice. We can start as soon as the boys get here. Start for where? You're going to Yuma to stand trial. If you're wise, you'll throw yourself on the mercy of the court and tell who's in with you. Yeah? Well, you'll never get anything out of me. Have it your way, Buckskin. You'll either testify or be convicted on our evidence. Saddle up, boys. Kentucky wants us over at the old hideout. I'll tell you all about it on the way over. I can't imagine what's keeping Larry and the boys. If they don't come soon, we'd better get started. I think I'll take a look around outside. No, oh, this kills me, horse. Trailers here, Kentuck? No, Steve Claggett brought them here to get Buckskin away from us. Steve Claggett? What makes you think so? I'll take you straight to the man that sent him, if we ever get out of here. I'll take some of your men and show them how to get in there and wipe them out. They're going to attack us from above, Sheriff. How do you know? There's a hole in the roof of the cave, and Steve Claggett knows about it. I just saw him take a bunch of Indians up there. You stay and hold them off here, and I'll try to hold them off on the inside. Right. I told you my friends would get your weight. And I'll get a few of them first. If you try to warn them, Get him. That's your friend Steve Claggett, Buckskin. Why don't you invite him down?
stop until you get to Kentucky. Hit hard, Sheriff? Well, I just grazed my shoulder. I'll be all right. Look, there's Larry and the boys. Well, they sure got here just in time, Kentucky. It's a Sheriff. Sorry, what can do? here just in time, boys. Where's the sheriff? He's inside. He's been nicked up a bit. Is he in shape to travel to Yuma? We're not going to Yuma, boys. Buckskin is dead. Yeah. Buckskin dead? He said bad thing. Now we don't find out who his boss is. As soon as I saw those Indians, I knew there could be only one man who's top handled the outfit we are after. Who is he? It may sound a little wild, boys, but it's Matt Keeler. Matt Keeler? Keeler? Yep. And as soon as we get the sheriff fixed up, I'm going into Brimstone and get it. Kentucky will come fogging in here any minute, Keeler. I tell you, you've got to do something quick. Keep your shirt on, Steve. Calling me names is one thing and proving it is another. I'm never going to give Wade a chance to do that. Let's get this in today's edition. And when Kentucky Wade comes in, tell him I'm over the silver dollar. Come on, Steve. But, Matt, you ain't healed. I'm always healed. Hello, Johnny. Keeler in? You know where he is? Steve told Keeler Kentucky is wise to him. Gone to Silver Dollar. Something's up. Does Kentucky know we tied him with Keeler? Well, if he doesn't, he'll soon find out. What are we going to do? I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm getting out of town. Howdy, gents. We're looking for Mr. Keeler. Where is he? Uh, he, he can't talk. Uh, we were looking for Mr. Keeler ourselves. Yeah. He's gone out of town. Keeler is at Silver Dollar. So he's out of town, eh? Yes. Uh, what's no. the idea of lying? And what's that paper you're trying to hide? Uh, no, uh, not nothing. Let's have a look at it. It's a personal matter. You can't have it. Oh, yeah? You read it, Kentuck. I like keep my eyes on these two hombres. Steve told Keeler Kentucky's wise to him. Go on to Silver Dollar. Well, it looks like these are the last two of the Secret Seven. You stay here, Trick, and find out how much they know. I'm going to the Silver Dollar. Get in there. You two. It sure is a great editorial, Matt. One of the best you ever wrote. This ought to wake people up to the need of law and order in this town. Thanks, Dan. Give me another thing, will you? Well, hello, Mr. Duck. What are you having? I'm having a showdown with you, Keeler. Showdown? Well, I don't think I understand you, Wade. I think you understand all right. I'm naming you the head of the outlaw gang that's been terrorizing Paradise Valley for more than a year. That's a pretty serious charge to make, Wade, without proof. I have proof. You sent those Indians out to get Buckskin away from the sheriff and me, for fear he'd talk. Well, I didn't even know you were holding Buckskin. That's a lie. I saw you spying on us when we were talking back of those curtains. I'm a newspaper man. We're I... wasting time, Keeler. You can tell your story to the court. I'm arresting you for cattle rustling, for running guns to the Indians, and for the murder of Doc Hardy. Since when are you the sheriff of this county? I'm not the sheriff, Keeler. 
but I am one of his deputies. Let's go. Back up with me, back up with me. We're going out here together. Anybody moves, Wade gets it. Stand back, Trigger. I'll kill him. Come get him, Trigger. the goods on him, Kentuck. Got a signed confession out of those two polecats in his office. That's fine, Drake. We've got enough to hang him. Get going. While we're singing a song of the sage, got the cattle bedded and the day's work done. I sure and hate to see you fellas hitting the trail. It's funny to keep you busy around here. Thanks, Larry. But you know me, I've been drifting too long to settle down. Like singing while we're riding home from the roundup on the range. Set an easy in the saddle and a swinging along. Singing a song.